السلام عليكم For uh, this session, we will start with the heat-related uh, illness. Uh, the objective for this session We will define the heat-related illness, determine what to do for when to call also the uh, emergency number, and what to do until help is arrived, and when caring for patient with heat-related illness. The, second, the third objective determine what to look for, and when to call also, and what to do until help arrived, when caring for patient with bites and sinks. That, this one, uh, it will be given with uh, Mrs. Weina. I will give uh, the first two objectives for today. So I will concentrate on the heat-related activity. In the heat-related activity, the condition caused by overexposure. So heat, it means that either overexposure to high temperature or exposure to a very low temperature. So it is either due to heat or due to cold. Uh, here in our area, mostly we are exposed to heat related. But even though we will discuss the uh, if there is some cases of uh, low temperature or due to coldness or cold weather. So about the heat related condition, which is due to high temperature, there are three conditions. So condition caused by overexposure to heat, Less loss of fluid and loss of electrolyte. So the, the condition that increase the possibility of exposure to those illnesses is combination of heat, high temperature, loss of electrolyte, and loss of fluid. Because of that, in hot weather, we have to get more fluid in order to avoid those conditions. And we have to, give, to get electrolytes. That will help us in maintaining our physical activities, our body in order to do normal physiology, in order to do the normal function of the body. Otherwise, if we are taking less fluid, if we are exposed to heat, then we might have one of those conditions. The first one, which is either heat cram. So it will start first as a warning, as heat cram. We will discuss them. If we neglect the signs and symptoms, that will come with the heat cramp, then it might come to a more extensive case, which is more complex case, which is heat exhaustion. If we did not treat or interfere, then it might go to the third one, which is the most worst one, which is the sunstroke. So those are the three conditions that we will discuss related to high temperature. And that might come due to high temperature. What we mean by heat cramp? What's heat cramp? What's the meaning of cramp? Painful muscle spasm. Painful muscle spasm. Painful muscle spasm. So it is a painful muscle spasm, so heat cramp or painful muscle spasm, they usually occur mostly in the legs and also abdominal muscles 
think of them as a warning sign for a possible heat related illness so in a hot weather if we are doing an activity and if we feel that there is a painful muscular spasm especially in the legs in this case it is a warning sign that you are exposed to a heat related illnesses so don't neglect it where mostly we are seeing it sometimes yes those who are playing football this, this is it is it doesn't only come with them it come with others but those because we saw them in the tv directly while they are playing because of that we observe the those uh, muscular spasm or uh, heat cramp on them so it is a warning sign because of exhaustion because they are playing for 90 minutes and they are always running at the uh, playing uh, area so because of that they are losing fluid because of that also the water that they are taking during that play it contain also more electrolyte in order to maintain their electrolytes in the body so what to do if we feel that we have muscular cramp or if we saw a case that has a muscle cramp so we said that it is the first sign of heat related activity the first thing that we have to do is to move the person to a cool place and to take rest so we should if we feel it we should stop our activity go to shade take some rest take fluid by that we will prevent the consequence of that condition are you with me so take rest take more fluid and avoid it go to shade in order to avoid direct sunlight by that it, it will be helpful so give electrolyte and also carbohydrate containing fluid he or she should keep drinking plenty of fluid so we should take more fluid in this case <coughs> and it has to contain electrolyte mean that uh, salts and also sugar lightly stretching the muscle gently massage to the area you saw that they are doing the playing guard they, they are doing massage to the area of uh, that spasm sometimes they are spraying some uh, analgesic or uh, that will decrease the pain or muscle relaxant they are using we have to watch the person carefully for further sign of heat related illness we said that it is warning sign if we did not take an action in this case the consequence it will go badly and it will go to heat exhaustion <coughs> now in order to avoid those or heat related illness what we have to do you know we have some workers who are working for the full day outside we have somebody that their work they it, it exposed them to a high heat during summer so what we can do to avoid 
this condition. This is we we said if we have the signs and symptoms, we have to do those things. But the best thing is to avoid the exposure to those problems. So how we can prevent it? So we can wear some protective devices for those workers. Either to keep some shade, some uh, head cover. This is one of the things. We, they, can, they can also sometimes uh, also soak it with water, especially if they are, especially for those who are working on construction, in building, in construction of roads also. They are, there is no way, those who are work, working in the desert in petrol and uh, uh, all of those petrol com companies, they are working under the sunlight. And you know, sometimes the temperature it is coming very high. It might go uh, around the 50 degree during summer. Also, we can avoid going out, especially during the extreme temperature, which is mostly from 2 to 4. This is the the highest temperature. So we have, we might avoid going out or working outside. In some of the companies also, they might change their work to do the work at night. Some of the work, it, it, if it is possible. <coughs> so by that, they are preventing exposure to heat. <coughs> the second thing also, what they, what, they, what they can do. So minimize the exposure. And wear protective material. There is another thing. Drink uh, enough fluid. Yes, they have to drink more fluid with electrolyte. So, so they have to drink more fluid. By that, because we are losing during summer, we are losing a lot of fluid. And sometimes in, in a hot weather, we are drinking maybe more than nine liter a day. But we are not going for to the bathroom. We are going there also. Uh, a small amount of urine is coming out only, and it is dark. Why? Because mostly we, we are losing the fluid through the skin. skin. It is going through the skin, a spitting. If that condition, if that person, after he feel the heat cramp, also continue with the, his activity, and if he didn't drink an enough water or fluid, in this case also it might, the condition, it might be changed to heat exhaustion. Heat exhaustion, it is a more severe condition than heat cramp. In this case, often affect mostly the athletic people, the <coughs> firefighter also, firemen, or, uh, construction worker, those who are working outside, and factory workers. So those are who are doing strenuous activity and mostly it is outside, under the sun uh, light. So it's also affect those who wear a heavy clothes in a hot weather, especially in a humidity, in a high humidity. Why high humidity it is worse than the hot dry area.
يعني in the coastal area humidity will be more when you are going there sometimes you feel suffocated <laughs> from the humidity why? new air sorry? new air is coming no, the air it is okay yeah. Okay, this is one one thing, but it is not the main thing that uh, she said that the uh, water vapor, which is there in the uh, atmospheric air, it will come to the lung and it will take a space in that. But the, the main thing, it is another thing. In hot weather, what will happen to our body? Start to sweat. Sweat, sweat, uh, here in our region it is a dry hot area during summer okay mm -hmm. so if we are going outside sweating will be there did it will remain in our body the sweating mm -hmm. what will happen to it it will be evaporated when it evaporate what will happen it will take the heat which is needed for evaporation from our body so it is a physiological loss of heat from our body so when sweating is there you feel sometimes some kind of relaxation but you have also to take more fluid. But in a high humidity, what will happen? It will not evaporate, it will not evaporate because the atmospheric air is full of water vapors. So there is no space. So because of that, you will feel that sticky skin it, it will be sticky on your body did you understand what what's yeah. the physiology yeah. so this is the physiology of it <coughs> so in high humidity we will feel more discomfort than in a hot and dry area so <coughs> What we have to look for in this case? <clears throat> the signs and symptoms mean what will appear on the patient. So, cool, moist, pale skin, ashy or flushed skin, either ashy. Do you know what's the meaning of ashy? Hmm? Ashy, يعني قشي in Arabic. كيف لون القش؟ <laughs> it is similar to the color of this disc. Uh, or flushed, flushed, going toward redness. Flushed face, flushed skin. Headache. So the client will complain from headache. Nausea. He want to vomit, nauseated. He feels that, that he want to vomit. Dizziness, you what? Generalized weakness. He is unable to do any work. He is exhausted. He cannot do anything. Exhaustion. So weakness first, then exhausted. He cannot do anything. <coughs> So those are the signs. What we can do in this case? The thing that we have to do, we have first to move the person to a cooler environment with circulating air. So circulating air, either fan, if there is a fan, or uh, AC if it is there, 
it depends upon where we are. If nothing is there, even if we are use manual uh, fan, that's it will be helpful at least. Loosen or remove as much clothes as possible. So keep the person with a light clothes. Apply cold wet clothes. So we can spray the person with water. But don't go to a cold water. Why? <coughs> Here we are, you have to go with the effect of the uh, heat and effect of cold on the body surface. <coughs> what we said about the hot dry weather, what will happen in hot and dry weather? In hot and dry weather, if we put water, if we soak our clothes with water, what will happen to it? It will evaporate. So when it evaporates, it will take the temperature which is needed for ev evaporation from our body. So it will decrease our body. And if the water that we give, it is even similar to our body temperature or slightly less than our temperature, it will be evaporated without effect on the blood vessels of the skin. If we are applying cold, in this case, what will happen? It will lead to construction of not the muscle, constriction of the blood vessels. It means the blood supply to the skin, it will be less. And you know that the circulation and, and the blood flow, it will take with it the, and it will maintain the body temperature. It is one of the factors that will help in transferring of temperature from side to side. So we want the blood vessels on the skin to be dilated, still dilated. We didn't want it to come to constrict. So we want a high blood flow to the skin in order to maintain the heat loss through the skin. So did you understand the issue? But when we are coming to uh, sunstroke, there we, we have to apply also, we have to apply ice sometimes. We have to apply the, uh, cold compressors. So spraying the person with water, position the patient to side to open the airway, to keep the airway beaten. And we said that he might have nausea. He might be nauseated. So, if he vomit, so in this case, aspiration will not happen. Keep the person lying down and continue to cool the body temperature and observing him. So, keep as minimum clothes on the client. Keep him in the shade, in a circulating air either fan or air condition. Also, if he is conscious, we can give him flu. <clears throat> the worst condition, which is related to the heat, is heat stroke or sun stroke. 
the heat stroke, it is the most severe heat related illness. So it is the most severe one. In this case, occur when people ignore the signal of heat exhaustion and <clears throat> develop when their, their body system are overwhelmed by heat and being stopped function. There is a normal physiology in order to maintain any, when any, did, did you talk the feedback mechanism in anatomy and physiology? Yes. In the first, yeah. that when any thing is elevated or coming down, there is a feedback mechanism that it will lead to some physiological action in our body in order to maintain it within normal to return it to normal. So here, <coughs> the body is overwhelmed with heat. The heat is going up. And the normal physiological action which is taken by the body, it is exhausted. The body cannot do more physiological action. They did not able to do more dilatation, did not, uh, unable to uh, excrete some of sweating or fluid because the fluid level in the body is coming down. So this will affect the body function and ability of the body to maintain the body temperature. So the body temperature, it will go up here and the function of the body due to loss of water and change of electrolyte in our blood, it will affect all the chain or the chemical environment inside our body. So this will lead to the sunstroke, which is a serious medical emergency. So in this case, what to do until help arrived. So in this case, he is in need for medical support. He is in need to uh, transfer to hospital and treatment. We have to rapidly cool the body by emerging the person sometime up to his neck in a cold water if possible. Cold water here, it doesn't mean iced water. Cold water, it is less than body temperature. It might be the comfortable one. It is mostly within 21 degree or 20 degree centigrade. Or sponging or spraying the person with cold water. Sponging uh, or uh, spraying here, even the water, if it is cold, if it is very, if it is from the fridge, no problem, can be. But emerging the body uh, in a very cold water while your temperature is very high, this also will interfere with the circulation and with the heart. It, the sudden change from, you know, when uh, our body temperature is high, the heart rate, it will be high or low? It will go up. The breathing also, it will go down or high, up? It will go up, why? To provide oxygen supply, because more metabolism is there. So it, it needs more oxygen. So, if you change from that to uh, putting that person in a very cold temperature, a uh, very cold uh, water, what will happen? That sudden change, it will interfere with the circulation and with the heart. So it will affect the heart. <coughs> so, sponge the person with uh, spray water, or cold, uh, cold water, Apply cooling method for 20 minutes as we can apply cold compresses uh, over that person or uh, ice on the head and the shoulder in the hands 
uh, of that person give care according to the condition of the client so according to what you observe in the client you have to give the care until and you have in this case we you have to transfer the client as early as possible to the hospital because in this case sometimes it is difficult to give water because his consciousness level it will be altered the level of consciousness will be altered in this case it is difficult to give him fluid directly in this case he need fluid replacement through IV therapy fluid and electrolyte Sorry. Yes, you can. You, you, you didn't have it. Yes. <laughs> it depends upon where you are. Yani in in uh, some big companies, they are having their own clinic within the working area sometimes. So in the clinic, they can do the, They can apply IV fluid for them. If a clinic is there. So it depends upon where you are. So what we have to look for, what are the signs and symptoms that will appear on the plant? The signs and symptoms, extremely high body temperature. So the body temperature, it will go more than 39, it will go up to 40 because uh, the body is unable to control the body temperature in this case. The heat regulating center is affected. Red skin, either it might be dry or moist. Dry, if it is dry, it means that the, the, the person is dehydrated. Change in consciousness level. The consciousness level of the person it might be very low. He might not respond. Or just responding by opening his eyes. When you are uh, trying to talk uh, to him. The, the pulse either it will be rapid and very weak. because of loss of fluid. So it, it will be rubbed and very weak. We cannot feel it properly. If you want to feel the pulse and to count the pulse, you will find that it is difficult to find the artery, to find the pulse, it, because it is weak. The breathing also, it is rubbed and shallow breathing. What's the normal breathing rate? Normal breathing rate. How many time we are taking in and out breathing in inspiration and expiration by bare minute? Breathing, breathing, no, not the pulse. This is the pulse, the pulse 80, yes. Around 80, yes. This is the, huh? from 12 to 20. For an adult, it is from 12 to 20. Here, you might find it 35, 40, but it is shallow, shallow breathing. What's the meaning of shallow? The depth is low. It is not a full breath. Yani when he takes the breath, it is not filling the chest with air. So it is a superficial breath. So both are, the breathing is high and the pulse is high. <coughs> the temperature is high. Even by feeling, you, when you feel the person, you, you feel that it is high without using the thermometer. It's, you feel the hotness. 
of the skin. <coughs> so this is the thing related to uh, <coughs> heat. Now, the other thing which is related to cold, we have what we call it the hypothermia. Hypothermia. Hypothermia, when does it happen? Hypothermia or very low temperature. Hypothermia, it means usually that the body temperature, it is going less than Thirty-five degrees. What's the normal body temperature? Thirty-seven. Thirty-six. From thirty-six point five to thirty-seven point five, it's considered as normal temperature. If it is going beyond that, it it is going toward a low body temperature. Then, if it is less than thirty-five degree centigrade. It is called hypothermia. So with hypothermia, when the body temperature is less than 35. 35 degrees centigrade. When those conditions might happen? In cold places, exposure to extreme cold. So you know that in some area, the temperature it will go beyond zero. It might go 14 below zero or, or more sometimes. So it is freezing. <coughs> so in this case also, we have to maintain our temperature within normal in order to keep our body working well. How we can help ourselves in order to prevent exposure to, uh, to hypothermia? What we can? Protective measure that everyone in that weather should take in order to avoid expo uh, exposure to this condition, to hypothermia. We have to wear uh, happy clothes. It is not the happiness of the clothes. It is the sometimes there is what we call it thermal clothes that it will help to keep the body temperature also. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> drink also uh, hot uh, drink instead of cold drink also. Take, take, taking food regularly also in order to maintain the metabolism and maintaining the production of heat by, by our body. Heat to protect it. And it is similar to the car. If there is no uh, petrol in the car, uh, can we switch it off, uh, on and uh, drive? No. And our body also is in need for energy. That energy comes from food and from also Sometimes, if the food is, it, it came from our uh, stored uh, limits, which is there, and stored sugar, which is there, but it's for a limit. So, <coughs> in this case, we have to maintain the food that we are taking, keeping ourselves, uh, and covering ourselves properly, especially also our hand and our ear. Because sometimes also they are advising the people not to touch in those weather, not to touch their nose or ear. Because it might be frozen and it might come out. Yeah? Because the temperature, the, the temperature is, yani the sign, the sign that will, you, you, you will see that the nose is becoming very red. Uh, oh, and the ear uh, blue back. So, 
uh, in those cases it is well, sometimes it is risky because there is what hypothermia and there is what we call it frostbite. Frostbite leaves some al barn. Frostbite in this case, what will happen? It might lead to death of the tissues due to the coldness. So the blood supply to the peripheral it will not reach the tips of the finger it will not reach the uh, loops of the ear or the tips of the nose due to the fr uh, frozen temperature you know who are the most exposed to those conditions according to age group who are the most exposed to, to that children yes baby yes they are more exposed to that because still their body facial and old men so old men. infant and small children and old men especially who are over 65 years old especially if they are not active so it need activity yeah sometimes in order to uh, keep ourselves uh, or our, our temperature we are doing some activities rather than also taking food and doing some activity keeping activity it will keep the circulation well and by that it will maintain the temperature of our body <coughs> so when it happened it happened when there is problem with the heating sometime the uh, <coughs> or sometime you know, even for a sunstroke or the extreme exposure to coal why we are exposing to to sunstroke because we are going for a long time under the sunlight sometime what will happen what might happen there is problem with your care and you are away so you have to walk until you reach an area especially in those who are uh, in sand area not in the in the road because if you are on the road you can stop anyone and go with him and he keep the car aside <coughs> uh, those conditions also we uh, observe it in pilgrims in why because they want they are exposed to the sunlight they are not using some time umbrella for, to protect themselves and they have to continue their function yeah. They have to reach the area. Ramil uh, Jamarat or so they, they might feel the signs and symptoms, but they said still there are uh, it is a short time uh, a short uh, time to, to reach that. So it that does need maybe ten minutes or so they will not stop at that time. So they will reach to heat, to heat exhaustion and, or heat sunstroke. Also, in the cold weather area, what will happen sometime? If problem with the, the with the car is there sometime due to uh, eye and snow, so the car can stop in the in the road. And if you are, are away from the city. What, what you can do the, the thing that you can you can wait if the the engine is still working you can use the heater but the engine also it can work for a period of time after that petrol will finish and the heater will goes off so you are exposed to a freezing condition for a prolonged time because of that it might lead to a hypothermia if no one is there to help in this case it might go to death 
and many cases of this happened due to that condition. <coughs> so the main thing if we find anybody with who are, is exposed to hypothermia, we have to take his wet clothes off, dry his body, change his clothes, cover him with uh, a blanket, keep him in a hot place, not to keep a direct, uh, and some, some of the people, they might say that we, we, we have to put a, a hot compresses over them. It is better to keep the environment uh, hot rather than putting a hot uh, compresses directly over them. So by that, we are helping them to uh, to maintain their body function again. Just I will show you uh, some video related to that condition. that we are uh, losing body temperature through it. it. It is, it might be through direct contact, it might be through convection, convection, it is the circulation, circulating air around our body. Because of that, when we are using fan, this, it will make a circulating air that, and you know that the air, usually the cooler air, it will go down, and the hot air, it will go up. Because of, of that, it's better not to use the ceiling fan. It's better to use the fan which is on a stand because that ceiling fan it will return back the hot air over there. Sequence when heat cramp is happened after some loss of body fluid, as we said. So, heat dehydration, heat cramp, heat exhaustion, heat stroke. This is the condition. So, those also the causes of. Uh, heat related illness, inadequate fluid intake, which is in the uh, vomiting, it can be due to the intake itself or due to vomiting or diarrhea or certain medication, sometimes it might lead to that.
the head with you. Despite how the uh, extremity can look sometimes, it is similar to the burma, very wide sir, and dry. As we said, we have to move the person to a warm area. Avoid freezing. Uh, hand, they are very. Uh, we have. We should not also hand. We have to handle uh, gently because otherwise we said that it is frozen. So if we are dealing with a frozen thing, sometimes it might go off. Never drive. Never drive the affected area. You can soak it in a, not a very hot. in order not to affect the circulation. Because in this case, if we are warming him suddenly, in this case, the heart, it will go from a very low uh, heart rate to a very high heart rate immediately. And this will affect the heart.
have any question? No. Any question related to either the heat, uh, both high temperature or low temperature? Mostly it will, it will come back. If we are dealing with it gradually. But if, if we are soaking it with a very hot water, in this case, what will happen? We are burning it. And no circulation is there. The circulation is, is very bad. So the conditions will be aggravated rather than helping. <laughs> so because of that, it has to be gradual. Yes, it might, it might be, uh, it might fall down.